Hello and welcome to the See For Yourself podcast, the only podcast where the protagonist gets a happy ending, but everyone else suffers. I am your host, Hubert Jazz, and I am joined here today by... Marmy. Marmy, we have a very special movie today, and uh, I know that we've talked in the past. Uh, you sort of confided in me once that you have sort of a, uh, a long, unspoken love for vampires, and I have a movie today. The, the name of the film is uh, Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust. Oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah, I know you're a big fan of the Vampire Hunter D. chronology of film, or of, of stories. Yes. Uh, and I know you haven't seen any of the films. I have not. I have seen this movie, and it is very interesting, I think. Not as, not as interesting as the last movie we saw together, <laughs> but it's more conventional, we'll say that. It's, it's more of a typical story, I'll, well, I'll say. I, I don't know. But I'll go ahead and give you the blurb for the film, and then we'll just talk about what are your expectations, what are you hoping for? Does that sound good? Sounds great. So, the blurb reads, In a time where a dwindling population of vampires struggle to maintain their rule of the night, a group of hunters threaten their remaining numbers with extinction. And that is the blurb. Go ahead and tell me what the blurb in your mind, what is that? What are you, what are you thinking here? What do you got for me? I'm not sure about how you can hunt a vampire and do a way and exterminate them. I mean, you tell me. You're the, you're the creative yeah. type. You tell me all the different ways one could potentially hunt a vampire. Or what is what is the profession of vampire hunter look like? Well, someone standing with a cross and a stake. Sure, yeah, a wooden stake. <laughs> yeah, right? a wooden stake. Do you think they're actually going to have a wooden stake, or are they going to have like some sort of special stake? I think because it's a movie, mm -hmm. it's going to be a special stake. Sure. Yeah. How, how do we make oh, well, a special stake? I think it's going to look spectacular. It's not going to be plain. I don't think it's going to be plain. I think, well, you know, you could put jewels on it. You could make it out of bronze or whatever really great materials available. You could anything but i don't think it's going to be wooden that brings up a good question because sort of the materials that are available the way you would make a weapon to kill a vampire a stake or something sort of depends on the setting of the film right the setting and the time yeah what what time is this movie set in oh i'm gonna say it's not current i'm going to say maybe the 1700s okay 1700s yeah all right, that's a that's an interesting time to pick. What made you What made you decide on the seventeen hundreds? I, I don't want to like belabor this point, but uh. Well, I'm just thinking that the interesting materials that you could use, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking of the costumes, the the dress of the time, mm -hmm. just the atmosphere that would have been at that time. Is there going to be any? Uh... Because we've sort of talked about a lot of conventional tools that one would use to hunt a vampire. What's the height of technology that's going to be used to hunt this vampire? These or these or many vampires, you know. What what is the craziest piece of technology that'll be in this movie? Oh my gosh, a spaceship! A spaceship <laughs> in 1700? <laughs> in 1700, I'm sure that it was around at that time. Well, Leonardo da Vinci would have been, yeah. you know, <laughs> making his little crafts and whatnot, and I'm sure, yeah. you know, he he makes a, a dinky helicopter, and they're like. That's a spaceship. That could take you to space. That's it, but I think it goes further than that. I think it's an actual... I think they had space travel back then. In 1700 with yeah. vampires and everything, yeah. being able to live forever, they'd be able to come up with better technology, huh? I think so, and I think it would make for a better movie. So uh, uh, why would they need to go to space? What, what would be the purpose of that? I think you could get more done. In space? Yeah. Mm. Is there a... Uh... The technology, I think, would be greater. Than it would be in, in, well, if you got space technology, mm -hmm. you know. So I know that you've read some of the Vampire Hunter D stories. Do you think Vampire Hunter D will be in this movie? He's in the title, but he's not mentioned in the blurb. Will he... Well, I think he has to be if his name's in the title. Sure. Do you think he'll be the main character, though? No, I doubt it. And based on the blurb, it kind of seems like maybe not. Yeah, you know, I doubt it. As we know, D works alone. Right. You know, he's our cowboy. You know, he he shows up. He's our space cowboy now. M maybe a space cowboy now. Right. Do you think that's too far out? Well, maybe for seventeen hundred, but you know, it, you could be wrong about seventeen hundred, but right about the space, or vice versa, right about seventeen hundred and wrong about the space. Who knows? Who knows? Or you know, you could be wrong about both, but they still go to space somehow. Somehow. You know, maybe they get teleported there. There's no spaceship, but there's a teleporter that exactly. takes them to the moon. Exactly. You know, oh. that's sort of the beauty of Vampire Hunter D stories is that they kind of they get they they get there. They get there. They get to weird places. Yeah. You know, how many how many of Vampire Hunter D stories have you read, and which ones like stood out to you that you liked? I think 
Was it the first one that I liked? Well, I liked them all. I just liked them all. Sure. You said you liked the first one, the one where he arrives at the town and it's a it's a girl that confronts him and she's like, hey, you know, protect my family because we're being attacked by this vampire. And it's sort of a, it's a very simple story. It's of, a simple story. You know, of a cowboy coming into right. town and helping you out. But it gets it gets crazier the more it goes on. Right. I love that about the Vampire Hunter D chronology. Fun fact, and I'm, I hope I'm not spoiling anything for you. Uh, this will be the second Vampire Hunter D movie. So this is not the first one. Okay. And they are talking about, and they have been talking about it for like 15 years, I want to say, doing a third film. And we just have gotten no traction on it. But the creator of these stories is very passionate about them and is very, like, driven to try to make more of them. And well, we... did the second one pick up where the first one left off? Not at no. all. No, okay. No. So, and I, I'm probably giving too much information here, but... Uh... That is another one of the beauties of the Vampire Hunter D storytelling style is that almost every story sort of picks up in an, in an anthology kind of way where it's just like, if you know nothing about Vampire Hunter D, you should be able to come in on this story and from start to finish, you have the same experience as anybody else coming into it, no matter how much they know about Vampire Hunter D. Okay. You know, you might have a little bit of a preconceived notion of how D typically behaves, but that doesn't necessarily mean that every story he's going to still be that silent, stoic character. There are some stories in the D line of storytelling where he's more talkative or more romantic or more, uh, it, it just depends on the story you pick. Right. What about that? Do you think that there will be any romance in the story? Is this a romance story? No, I don't think so. Too... I don't think it's going to be. Well, right, because we're cowboys, right? We're, yeah. We don't have time for romance. You know. Well, that's... they do have time. I mean, I think they dream about it or think about it every once in a while, but whether they're able to act upon it, I'm not sure. I know you've seen a lot more cowboy films than I have. Do you think this movie will remind you of any cowboy movies when you're watching it? You're like, oh, this is kind of like Jeremiah Johnson or, or kind of like Dances with Wolves or one of, one of those. Or... I don't think so. I, I appreciate that you have a desire to, <laughs> to see an experience that's completely new. A lot of times we have guests on this podcast that are like, no, it's going to be like this because I saw, I saw a vampire movie once and I know exactly how vampire movies work and it's going to be just like this one. You know, I saw an interview with a vampire. It's just going to be an interview with a vampire. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, you know, they're going to come with something really different. You, you said that you had, uh, you, you don't really tell people very often that you're interested in vampires. Do you want to talk about that? Why, why is that? Why don't you feel like it's, it's... Oh, I think it's a taboo and people think all kinds of weird things about that. How, how often do you tell people you're interested in vampires? Oh, I don't. Never? mm, -mm. You just don't do it. No. You have a lot of friends and a lot of a lot of close people yeah, in your life, no. and you just don't you don't share that with mm -hmm. them. No. The only one, like I told you, was my dentist. He's the one that turned me on to him originally. Mm -hmm. That's the only person I've ever spoke to other than you about it. Did it, did he? Because I know you said that your one of your favorites is Interview with a Vampire. You really right. like that one. Mm -hmm. Is that the one that he told you to check out? Yes. Oh, okay. So that's where you got started. Right. And and since then, has there been one that you liked? Maybe not as much as Interview with the Vampire, but you liked it a lot and it's worth noting. No, I think I liked that because it was my first one. And it was, you know, when you're watching something for the first time or listening to it or reading it, the thrill of it, you can never duplicate that again, I don't think. Unless you go on to something... Something real special. Yeah. Real special. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if... I don't... I feel bad. I don't know if Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust... This is... We're kind of, I'm kind of dropping you in on the second movie. But I, 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 I will say this. The movie looks really good. At the very least. It's a good... It's a handsome film. Good. So if nothing else, you can look at it and go, Well, that's handsome. I'm excited. I was hoping to get a couple more questions out. Was there anything that you wanted to say that I haven't covered yet or haven't brought up yet? No, I, I think the only thing is that I'm just sorry other people. I, I don't know how many people, you know, are really appreciative of those, of the vampire movies or books. And they just don't feel like they can talk about it. Right. I think that uh, we sort of do this to ourselves a lot in life where we think that something is shameful or, or embarrassing, even uh, just taboo in, in any right. way. And uh, so we hide it from people. Right. And we don't realize that that's a way of restraining your own freedom, you know, exactly. and, and, and nobody should live in any kind of shackles, you know, whether they're physical or mental. I agree. I, th I think you should, you should just, just tell people, you know, hey, I don't know if you know, 
but I, I'm here for the vampires. I'm, I'm down for it. Yeah. I'm into I'm, it. I'm loving it. Yeah. Every time I see them, I, I, I love it. And I want to see them. I want to see them get killed. I want to see them, you know, live good lives. I want to see them live bad lives. I don't care what they're doing. Just, I just want to see them. Yeah. Do you think we'll get anything other than vampires in this movie? What other creatures could be in a vampire movie than a, other than a vampire and people hunting the vampires? Oh, there could be. Right? Yeah. We could do there that. could be. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, oh, lots of things. Sure. Any example. Throw like anything dragons. out. Dragons. A dragon? That'd be cool. Yeah. You already said spaceship. A dragon's Sp- not too far off. Spaceships and dragons. Yeah. And what else? Snakes. Snakes are scary. Yeah. Yeah. We don't like snakes. No. You think there'll be a... Uh, what about a what about a werewolf? Werewolves Absol- are cool. Absolutely. There has to be. And, and a, yeah, yeah. I think that that's a very good possibility. Or do you think that there'll be... If we do get a spaceship. I'm not saying that we will, but if we do. Do you think there'll be like an astronaut guy? Like they'll actually have an astronaut helmet and everything? and Or, or will, will they just not even care about all the science of it? And they'll just be in space. No helmets, no nothing. Yeah, I th- <laughs> that's a good one. You, I think it'll be creatures, but it's not going to be like what we think an astronaut is. Sure. That makes sense. It will be more... Uh, do vampires even need to breathe in space? I don't think so. Because they're already dead. I don't think they... Yeah. No, they don't need that. Yeah, they can just... Yeah. They can just be out there. They they can be out there. I don't know. It's cold out there, but they're already cold. They don't have any yeah. you know, blood running through them other than right. what they eat. Right, So, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be the scariest place for a vampire to be out there. Like, they're maybe underwater, because they, if they don't need to breathe, they can just be underwater, too. Right. What was the movie that we saw with the octopus-like thing with the tentacles? And what was that movie? Hmm. You got anything else for me for it? Oh, I can't even think of what it was. I can just see the creature. What did it look like? It's octopus? It, yeah, it had big arms, was it, tentacles. and Was it bloody at all? No. Or no, not bloody? Mm-mm. Hmm. What color was it? Oh, it was probably, I don't know, gray or green. Mm. I got nothing for no. you. You want a you want a spooky t- tentacle monster in this thing? Is that what you're hoping for? Well, why not? Yeah, an octopus creature. We all like those. Okay. Well, we are sort of coming up on that time. Is there anything else you want to just throw in there? You know, maybe there's a crazy killer clown, or maybe there's like a <laughs> like a, I don't know. We're just throwing out crazy stuff. I here. Know. This is this is the portion of it where you can say anything you want, anything at all. I know. Well, when I start thinking about that, you know, other things that. Reminds me, it probably shouldn't be in the 1700s. So I'm going to stay with the 1700s. Okay. I like I like the boldness. Yeah. Stick stay with, with it. it. Yeah. The wolves. The wolves, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Snakes and yeah. and octopus monsters and a spaceship. And you've kind of created a little bit of a, a crazy yeah. movie here. But I like it. I love it. That's what we're okay. here for. That's what we're down for. I'm uh, ready. Boy, am I going to be in for a big happy thing here. I, I, I'm sure you'll love it. I know you like the vampires. And I want to show you as many vampire things as I can. You love vampires. I love that you love vampires. Oh, great. So uh, we'll go ahead. We'll just we'll, we'll cut it here. You know, audience, go out, watch the movie. We'll go out, watch the movie. And we'll be back in about... 10 or 15 seconds to talk about it. Okay, sounds great. And so we're back from watching the movie. I know you have a lot of things to say. I'll go ahead and let you, I'll leave it to you. I loved it. Of course, I was off on a few things that I thought might take place, but... The movie was great. Tell me about, uh, were there any parts of it that just like stood out to you as you you really loved them? You really thought they were spectacular in some way? Well, I think the last scene, the climax of the show, Mm -hmm. I just bought it all together. It was, it was pretty spectacular. Um, we're going to pause right there. Okay. Paul, you need to come through? Come on through. I I moved all the things out your way. I got to go to the bathroom. Yeah, of course, of course. (laughs) So now you said that the ending was spectacular for you. What about it? I just think the way uh, the building, how they took that building and sort of made it into the spaceship mm-hmm. type uh, transportation. I love the graphics, the gun that the girl had. Yeah, it was really cool. That was fabulous. Who could even dream that up? It was so artistic. And the way that it sort of, when she fires it, it just like, it doesn't like warp things around it. It just destroys everything it touches and just it, completely, it, yeah. like, almost it's like. Just like a laser gun that just yeah, uh, yeah. magnified. Like a like it makes a black hole almost. Right. It's, it's very, very interesting. Like a projectile that's also yeah. a black hole. I mean, or... that's just something that so much thought was put into it. You know, they didn't have to do that. 
Yeah. That, it wasn't anything they ever had to think about doing, but they did it and it made it so much better. Yeah. That's sort of the power of Vampire Hunter D as like a story or however the original author chooses to do this. He, he constantly just picking things that, you know, uh, you remember the sand mantas or the the desert mantas, the manta rays right. that would come yes. out of the sand? Right. Why, why was that there? Yeah. There was no reason for it. Yeah. They just, or, they or did the, it because. The stingrays. It makes it more yeah. interesting. Yeah. That, that threw me. Yeah. When that came, I was going, whoa. And you had just, in that same scene, just beforehand, you pointed out there was a statue of a dragon on a, on a lamp or a, or a lamp post or something like that. Right. You were like, oh, look, a dragon. And the manta rays kind of play as dragons. They're just right. flying through the sky, you know, and they have those big sharp teeth and everything. And the left hand that D has is telling him like, oh, no, don't bother with those things. Get out of their way. And he's just going through them because. Just the attention to detail. The details and the, and the, the willingness to really go there, you know? Yeah. Once that's we're right. Gonna, we're going to leave some room for Potter. There is, I will say, there is a strange fear in a lot of storytelling of adding these sort of extra details. These things that we think of as unnecessary. But really, uh, to me, especially in a story like this, where, you know, you predicted it might be set in the 1700s, but most of Vampire Hunter D stories are sort of ambiguously set both in the past and in the future. Right. So far into the future, it's become like the past. Um, exactly right. They have like a highway at one point, or a, and a satellite dish, and spaceships, and a, a whole space station that's set out in space. Right. And it all has like gothic architecture from like the 16, 1700s, but like uh, they they have a tank, and a motorcycle, and a rocket launcher. Uh, uh, lasers and, and uh, all these different... If you couldn't like this, you couldn't like anything. There was something for everybody. There yeah. was suspense. It was a thriller. A little bit, the, you know, if you like the guns and all that action, there was that. And you had the romance. There was that. But the graphics... Oh my God! Oh, it was be- it's beautiful, and that that movie's twenty three years old. Ah, oh. it's older than some of the people listening to this right now. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that's yeah. unbelievable. Twenty three years old. And it, and it holds up today. It's a beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Was there one scene that you can you can think of as like you really liked the uh, not not the visuals of it per se, but maybe the dialogue, the things that were being said, the emotion it was evoking in you? I think sort of toward the front when he's buying the horse and the the man that sold him the horse, and he has the whole dialogue there about what had happened previously and how he felt about what he was doing. I thought that was very impactful. That is my favorite scene in the movie. And it almost makes me cry every time. Yeah. It's that one line where he says, I would rather be an old fool than what you are, Sheriff. Right. What is he What is he implying that the Sheriff is there, do you think? <laughs> yeah, he's worse than a fool. Uh, worse than a fool, definitely. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of things you can take from that. Maybe he's saying he's a coward. You know, maybe yeah. he's saying that he's uh, he's rude. But I think that really what he's saying is that he's a bigot. Sure. You think that all damn peels are all people that are vampires or all people that are half vampires are all alike. Right. And you're unwilling or unable to think of them in more complicated terms. Sure. One of my favorite things about this movie that kind of goes unspoken is that it really does talk about age as a virtue or experience as a virtue. Right. It almost seems like it's trying to have like a youth is a sin sort of thing to it. But I think that ultimately, despite the fact that there are many scenes where they say like, Charlotte, you're too young. You don't know what he's like. You know, you're just a young girl. Ultimately, it's proven that everyone was wrong. She did have a deep and complicated relationship. Yes, she did. Uh, and and it wasn't, you know, he was tricking her, he had lied to her, or anything yeah. like that. She knew, and she understood, and she chose. Right. So I think the movie doesn't say that being young or being inexperienced is bad. It's just saying that being experienced and being older can be a good thing, and I think that that's really smart on the movie's behalf. I agree. There were so many of those moments that you could have slid right over, but then when you go back in retrospect, you remember them, and you can go, oh. I know a lot of people who look at this movie as sort of just like a an action romp with like a romantic subplot. Right. But I think it's so much more than it's, that. It's deeper than that. Their willingness to talk about things like bigotry and to talk about things like uh, complicated love and affection, right. Right. family ties, and a desire to connect with long lost family members. Right. That's one of the, uh, again, an impactful scene for me is the, the very, very final scene where he goes and visits Layla's grave. 
Right. And there's this one line there again where D says, I just came to keep a promise with a friend. I wanted to make sure someone would show up at her grave. Right. She was worried that wouldn't happen for her. And I'm glad to see that that's not true. Shockingly, the granddaughter is, Layla's granddaughter is capable of understanding, which is weird. Um, yeah, right. You would think a child would be like, I don't get how showing up is enough. But right. There's a lot of wisdom here. Like so much of human compassion and human love and human friendship is really just about showing up showing up and and it all doesn't depend on age you know doesn't mean that if you're real old you understand everything it crosses the path of age the whole plot does yeah and everything that it's doing it's a good message yeah it's really strong i thought about you when they were talking about when charlotte and meyer link were talking about being free they, they talk about being free so much they want to be free Right. But they're not enslaved by anybody. There's nobody, like, holding anything over them, or they're, they're effectively free. But what they really mean is to be free from expectation and free from judgment. Right. And I think about how you, you struggle with telling people that you're interested in vampires, that you right. like vampires, and that you, you should be allowed to tell people that. You should be free from that, that judgment and that expectation. Why not? Yeah, it's a curse that's put on people. It's it's crazy that we do this to each other and we know we hate it when it happens to us consistently. Everyone hates being judged and being expected to be a certain way. Nobody likes it, and yet we still do it. We perpetuate this. Right. Either on other people or on ourselves. I mean, I can't tell you how to live your life. I'm not your dad. I know I look like this. I'm not really him. <laughs> Um, I, I hope that you can, you know, move forward in your life and, you know, when you're sitting around with the old biddies and you're hanging out with all your friends and your loved ones <laughs> and they're talking about, oh, I went and I saw the football game. Boy, I love football. You can say, football's nice, but I, I like vampires. I'll tell right. you what. Can we right. talk about could vampires? We have, could we have a show where vampires are playing football? Yeah, well, why not? Why not? Seems like a fun thing. Go for it. Right? I'd, 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 lo I'd love to hear it. You know, write me, write me up a pitch. We'll see if we can't put, put it into something. I don't know. Could be fun. Better idea than most of the stuff I've heard all week, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> what, did you, what did you think of the Barbaroi? The, like, the, the gang of misfits that protect other misfits? Yeah, I, I thought they, you know, they didn't make a whole big deal about it, mm -hmm. but yet it was just there. It was just there. And so you could judge it or not judge it, which, you know, you could choose. They, they treat so many things in this movie like they're the most normal thing in the world. Yeah. Like that satellite dish that's just in the background. They pay right. it no attention. It's just there. It's just there. But it looks so weird compared to everything else. Yeah. Or the manta rays. They're just like, yep, those, those flying manta rays that dig into the sand and jump out of the sand. Normal. Normal. <laughs> they don't pay it no mind. No. And it's the same with the Barbaroi. They've been there. They've been doing their business. You know about us. Yeah. We protect those those creatures and those monsters and the freaks and the weirdos. That's what we do. You know that. Yeah. Like, it's the most normal thing ever. Everybody knows the Barbaroi. We all have a Barbaroi. Yeah. I like that. I like how the movie treats those weird things. Were there any characters you specifically connected with? You thought, that's that character was written for me. I like that person. I like that individual. I just think that, I don't know, there's just so many of them that from scene to scene, there was always someone that I could relate to. No one really stood out. The character of Carmela mm. was interesting. She didn't play a huge part, but the way they just kind of put her in there. Yeah. And it, that was, I like that. It's kind of easy to forget that Carmilla, like, sort of betrays them by the end because she's introduced so invitingly. Yeah. You know, she's like, I'm so happy for you guys. You seem to have beaten the odds. And there was a time back in my day when, you know, a human and a vampire could be together, but it's not like that anymore. And you're, you're kind of very uh, subtly being given a lot of exposition here where they're just sort of explaining the world, but it feels like it's just old friends talking to each other. Right. And she's there and then she's gone. Yeah. And then she's almost forgettable. Really, she's cr incredibly impactful to the story. She hires the Barbaroi. Right. She's the one who does that. So she sets a lot of the wheels in motion here and sort of allows a lot of the plot to happen. But she only shows up at the very end. Right. I, I like Carmilla as well. I think she's an interesting character. And really, she's sort of the ultimate villain of, of the story. So interesting because we never really get that big fight between Meyer Link and, and D. Right. You know, we're kind of set up early on where, what is it? Meyer Link says um, only a moron or a fool would fight a vampire.
vampire at night, which are you? And I love that line. But they, they have that quick little clash, and you're kind of wondering, like, wow, how is this going to... Something going to come down here, yeah. big time. I think the last line in that, like, when, when they part ways in that clash, it's Hand, and he says, well, what just happened? And D explains the girl called out to him. And Hand sort of says, well, she doesn't know. She's too young. She doesn't know what he's capable of. And I think it kind of like sets in your mind, well, what is Meyer Link capable of? Are we going to get to see that? That's right. And it turns out we do. Meyer Link is capable of deep and profound love. And I wish they had given more time. They kind of have that that one interaction between Meyer Link and Charlotte. But it, he cuts it off and says like, hey, let's talk about this more on the spaceship. That is one thing in the movie I genuinely disliked. I wanted more, more, more talking about the profound love that they have and how it's more complicated. Because it seems in the beginning that it looks kind of like he's hypnotized her a little. Yeah. And it seems almost like he's not paying attention to her feelings enough. Mm -hmm. Because he knows, and he thinks that's enough, that he knows... But she doesn't. She can't control her feelings. And he doesn't He doesn't take the time to explain to her why being a vampire is so, so difficult. He notes that it is, yeah. but he doesn't explain. Right. A lot of people think just saying it's hard is enough of an explanation, but it's not. You need, here is why it is hard. Right. That's a full and profound explanation, yeah. a complete explanation. Yeah. I think, you know, he made maybe half a sentence. It's dark all the time or something. Yeah. The, and, I want to drink blood and that sucks. Yeah. Like, it, it's not enough. It's not enough. And I, and I get why a filmmaker might not want to include more lines about that. Because lines are kind of boring. They're not as interesting. And, and it's kind of hard to, like, use just enough for it to feel natural, but not so much that you're kind of just drowning people in it, right? Right. And... I think in this movie, the graphics were almost more than the story at times. And it was beautiful. The way they did it was beautiful. You didn't resent that at all. Yeah, it's such a splendor to like watch with your eye. I genuinely think you could turn the volume off entirely and I just agree. visually watch it and it would be perfectly good. Yes, I agree. A couple, a couple more unsung characters who don't really get enough time of day. Charlotte's dad mm -hmm. really loved his character. He gets one scene. Yeah. But he gets he's so wise. And again, this is the, the age and experience as a virtue. Right. His willingness to say, I recognize there's a very good chance my daughter's been turned. You have to kill her if she has, but be kind to her. She's a gentle soul. Don't hurt her. Yeah, was that was hard. And his, and, and his son being like, you know, trying to express, no, he's got to get there before that. He has to save her. And being, being old and wise enough to say, you know, it's very likely there is no saving her. Right. And we can't let her go on this way. Yeah, that was, that was where you could, you know, age and youth. Mm -hmm. That was a good story right there. Just on one scene. Yes. Enough to make a whole movie out of that. Yeah, that was enough. That was good. I'd love to follow that story. This old man in his wheelchair and his son, like, helping him hunt vampires. Maybe that's the right. family business. One of them is like, we got to save everybody. And the other, the old man's like, we can't. Can't do it. It's not an option sometimes. We have yeah. to kill innocent people who've been turned into vampires, who did nothing wrong, who didn't ask for this. But now they're not themselves anymore. They're monsters. And that's, that's an interesting take on it. Because we learn that Meyer Link isn't a monster. No. He's willing to resist his urges in order to have a, like, more real connection with Charlotte and have right. her live a more fulfilling life than being a vampire. Right. There's more complication here. And uh, Carmela points that out. We're, we're complicated characters. We're complicated creatures, vampires. Yeah. We're, we're capable of love. We're susceptible to it. Beautiful story, really. And it's a story that you're going to think about it for hours and maybe even days because you're going to keep picking up on things that... You didn't immediately see, but then your your mind will bring it back to you. What did you think of the uh, the, the monsters that we did get? I know you you were you were <laughs> hoping for a tentacle monster. We kind of got one. We that, got... that dryad girl, the the enchantress or whatever you will right. of the group. She's sort of a she's got like tentacle like hair and right. whatnot. And yeah. that's there's there's something there. Not exactly what you were asking for, but I wasn't I wasn't surprised. I knew it was going to probably come in some form, but I didn't think hair. Sure. <laughs> Uh, uh, I really like the quote-unquote werewolf in this movie. He's got that, like, yeah. mouth that comes out of his oh, chest. Yeah. That was really that was cool. was good. Yeah. Gosh. Again, they don't need to do that. No, but they did. But they did. And it felt good. Yeah. Oh, gosh. You know, you just don't get that in a lot of movies. Mm-hmm. 
You just don't get it. Anytime I, I show you a movie, I want you to see things that you wouldn't see somewhere else. Right. I know we talked about this in the last uh, episode we did together for Naked Lunch. Right. And I just want you to see stuff that you're going to be like, well, I never would have seen something like that otherwise. Right. Exactly. There's no way. Yeah. I can't think of a single other movie where they have a werewolf with a mouth coming out of its you know, no, torso. But it, wasn't it beautiful? It was cool. Yeah. It was beautiful. Everything was beautifully done. Looked really good and it felt appropriate, really, when you think about it. That makes sense for a yeah. werewolf. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of the voice acting was very well done. You ever watch that show, King of the Hell? Yes. You're familiar with any of the characters? You know them by name, by chance? No. So, you know, the dad is, is Hank Hill. Right. Right? And his he has a son, Bobby Hill. The voice actor for Bobby Hill, Pamela Alden, I think is her name. We'll just call her Pam. Pam did the voice acting for Layla as well. You're kidding. Yeah. Oh, that's a good fact. Mm-hmm. And then uh, if you ever get a chance to watch Futurama, he does more voice acting than just for Futurama, but he's probably most famous in Futurama. He plays the robot bender, uh, John DiMaggio. He was a ton of characters in this movie. Wow. Yeah. You can, you can tell his voice uh, apart. From other people pretty easily. I want to say he was the the sheriff of the town. Okay. You remember the sheriff who was yeah. kind of a bigot? Yeah. And then the uh, he was the dad, uh, oh Charlotte, Charlotte's dad. Yeah, played a, he played a bunch of different characters. He was <laughs> he was the werewolf. No kidding. Mm-hmm. I think that would be a, a fun thing to do voice. Apparently, you can get into it pretty easily. Well, a lot of people are doing it now too. Yeah. I won't I won't say who, but we have had a guest on uh, on See for Yourself who does voice acting work. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, they just do it in their spare time. That's great. That's yeah. a good thing. I hope they get to the point where they can do it, you know, full time. That'd be that'd be cool for them. Right. But they're doing all kinds of little projects and little things to, you know, keep the keep the wheels moving and sure. keep the lights on, I imagine, and you know. Right. Uh, so it's, it's never it's not outside of your reach. Why you know? not? You've got internet now. You could always just go for it and do yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Just saying. Might be might be kind of <laughs> neat. We are always saying that you know we need more. Uh, more older people in in the, the performance arts. At least you and I are. I don't know about the rest of the world. It seems like the whole rest of the world's gone crazy. <laughs> they just don't know. They hate old people for some reason. I don't know what it is. I don't either. Mm, you didn't do nothing wrong. No. We need. You know what we need to do? We need to build a spaceship in the back of the house and just be free of all this is what we need to do. Yeah. That's it. I, I think that was that's the best idea yet. Mm-hmm. So you know um, the novelization or the book or whatever you want to call it that this the story is based on for Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. It didn't include the ending. The ending for this is not in the original story. This is original for the uh, for the movie. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. The whole bit with uh, with D seeing his mother and his mother sort of telling him this this story has a lot to do with mothers, by the way. Yes. There's a clear love for mothers in this story or at least a respect for them a connection with them right it gets brought up a lot a lot i don't know exactly what they're going for here maybe there's something to do with you know birth and death and how that all comes back to mothers mothers are always going to be an integral part of the birth and death cycle right i'm not exactly sure but i i know that that wasn't in the original story d's mother is not brought up almost ever in the uh the original writings about vampire hunter d she, she has left a very ambiguous character. I'll be darned. We know she's she's human, but that's about it. There are a couple of other things, too. Like, I, I want to say it's the Barbaroi, uh, the sort of the chief of the Barbaroi, the guy in the little unicycle. Very cute character, by yeah, the way, right? That's pretty cute. adorable. Yeah. I love I love how he says uh, he says that to Dean in his opening line. He's like, uh, and you're, you're terribly handsome, or is that off-putting for <laughs> yeah. someone as old as me to be admiring you this way? Yeah. And I, I love how he says that, because it does point out something that a lot of times if it's not someone that you want to admiring you they're not allowed to admire you and it's it's a little exactly. it's, I don't know if that's weird or if that's appropriate I can't be sure but I, I just love the line I, I think the line is I great I think it was great that is one of the things in the books that they do a lot where they note how beautiful D is all the time, just out of nowhere, people will just be like, Lord, that's a beautiful man. Right. I don't know if they're just like, you know, noting that that's a thing with that line or what, but uh they do. They do say it. <laughs> Oh, that's great. But he, uh, the Barbaroi points out that, uh, he's seen many damn peels, but none like D. And that's kind of weird. In the books, it just depends on which of the novelizations you read, but it's sort of like they, they kind of pick and choose. It's, it's sort of like the, the age that we're in. Is it the 1700s or is it 30,000 years into the future? Right. You know, they can't really decide, so they kind of do both. And they do the same thing with damn peels. Is there a bunch of damn peels running around or is D the only one? Eh, let's just do both. Right. And in this case case they kind of go 
with one specifically. You, I was hoping to find a line somewhere where they would be like, D, the only damn peel. And then also the line earlier where that guy says, it's almost like they're so far into the future that there are some people who've lived for 5,000 years and might have more information than somebody who's only been alive for 60 years or something like that. Right. And again, we come back to age or experience as a virtue. Right. And how not everyone is a uh, completely uh, believable narrator. Or even that uh, some people are just ignorant. They don't know. That's right. Bengi says that. The uh, the sort of shadow uh, jester character. He, he says, you're either stupid or you're ignorant. I'm not sure. And so they note that, like, sometimes people do things not because they're, they're morons or fools, but they're because just, they just don't know. They're just ignorant. Yeah. But they don't, they don't offer that option to D. D is never, ever noted to potentially be ignorant. It's implied that he might be being stupid or overconfident or something like that, but never that he doesn't know. Exactly. He knows. He's been around. He's seen, right. he seen it. He's seen things. Yeah. I don't know why I really love Left Hand also. We don't talk about Left Hand enough, but he's, he's really neat. At no point in the movie does D shut him up, except for that one time. You remember what they were talking about in that one time? No, oh, remind me. He says to D, I know what gets under your skin. I know what bothers you about this. You think that if you let this go, Meyer Link and Charlotte might have a damn peel together. They might procreate a child right. that will be half vampire, half human. And that really bothers you. That really just, it doesn't sit right with you. And I know that. And so he silences him by closing up his, his hand. And we've seen in the past, like, what was it? When he jumps off of the carriage and he lands sort of in that superhero pose right. with his palm on the ground. And you can hear hands saying, oh, my nose, my nose. <laughs> Uh, so he can he can silence left hand whenever he wants, but he chooses not to consistently. Even when he's being his most annoying, he's like, think of the money, think of the money, go drink her blood, wouldn't that be funny? Ha <laughs> ha. He's so annoying sometimes, but he doesn't silence him. But he does silence him when he brings up the possibility of a new Dampiel being created and how much that disgusts. D, or, mm. or it infuriates him, or it makes him sad, whatever, I don't, I'm not sure. How do you feel about D as a character who's almost entirely silent? Well, I think it's needed. I, I really do. I think that's, you know, that's his persona. That you have to have, you know, that, that weight. You've got one heavy and one light, so to speak, and it's mysterious. Yeah, you've got to have... Uh... One person who's making jokes and one person who's right. being serious. We get that entirely in D by himself because left hand is always with him and right. can, can make light of things and whatnot. Even at the end of the movie, after we get that very touching scene about human connection is showing up for each other and being there with, with right. one another. Immediately after that, left hand makes a joke and then the movie ends. Right. So we always have that interaction. But I, I love D as a mostly silent protagonist because it leaves so much more room for the rest of the cast. Exactly. Sometimes it can't all be, you know, wordy or that's a spirit that is, I think was kind of needed there. I do wish, and I, you know, honestly, I'm probably being unfair, but I wish we got more from Grove, the guy who could turn into a spirit and shoot lasers and he was sort of right. sickly and in bed and whatnot. Right. Yeah. Because he just faded in and out. He, yeah. to me, of all the characters, he's the most tragic because it's implied that he dies in that last uh, fight and he calls out to Layla as he's dying by himself in the truck because he never leaves yeah. the truck. And yet, like, like he had that tube in his nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that makes you wonder, where, where did, who fixed him up with the tube? That's, that's probably part of the tragic nature of his character. He probably had to crawl up into that bed and set himself up and put all the drugs and the clippings and exactly. the whatnot. Exactly. And that's got to be, you know, you've seen people who are, you know, sick and, and they're not able to take care of themselves real good like, and they're very anemic and just like him. And, right. and it's hard for them to take care of themselves in any capacity. It's so right. it must have been a lot for him to do that. A lot. And so it, in essence, he was a very strong character. He was very weak to look at. Mm-hmm. But the character, and when you put behind it everything that you just mentioned, that makes them a strong character. Not only strong physically and emotionally, but like in just the terms of the characterization between characters. I don't know about you, but I was constantly thinking, I hope Layla makes it out of this and goes on to have a nice life with Grove. I don't, I don't need them to be romantic. I don't need them right. to be in love. It would just be nice if she took care of him. Exactly. Or they took care of each other, you know? Yeah. Because it's pretty heavily implied that maybe Layla gives up on hunting now that she's seen how difficult it can be and she's seen how, you know, it, it really burdens D the way that it does. 
and she's concerned about dying alone. Right. And she takes Grove, and they go and they live a happy life together somewhere. But that doesn't happen. Right. That's kind of the, the arc that we're setting up over the film. And then Grove dies. It's never said whether or not she gives up on hunting. She's just, take me to the next town. Yeah. That's where it ends for her. Yeah. She really came into it, didn't she, at the, at the end of the movie. She, her whole essence change she made a 190 degree turn i liked a lot that kind of the big points for her we get sort of these three really good beats where in the town she sort of antagonizes the sheriff to go hunt down d she like lets him know oh there's a damn peel in town i thought you'd be dealing with that and then that causes that whole scene and then the next time her heart's a little bit softened after hearing the story of the kidnapped kids and she doesn't shoot her her rocket at the bridge or anything she just yells no stop it and then right. le- and then leaves after the big explosion and everything but she never fires right and then at the end she says i'm done with killing i don't want to be a part of this anymore i'm done with so it's pretty heavily implied she stops hunting but we never really right. get that but you could see her soften yeah she just everything softened about her yeah and she, and she just came to the realization. It, it can't just be revenge forever. Right. It can't just be hunting all the time. It has to be more right. than that. Yeah. What a, what a complicated character. What an interesting character. Right. There's so many cool things about this movie. We could talk all day about it, really. But were there any any last things you just wanted to get off and, and, and mention really quick? I, I don't think so. I think as we go on, there's going to be more that we're going to want to talk about it because we're going to just keep thinking about it. But right now... I'm still in it, but just letting everything go through my head. It was a beautiful movie. I'm so happy we watched it. I, I know that your your big uh, vampire movie is Interview with a Vampire. Do you feel like this one's even close? Oh, yeah. Definitely. All right. That's yeah. good to hear. I have a couple of things for you. Just a really quick note. I don't know if you noticed this, but did you notice that the, uh, the horses are, are machines? They're not living real horses. <laughs> That's another thing I was going to mention. The gun and the horses... Mm-hmm. And at one point, the stagecoach even. Yeah, it's it's like mechanical. It's it's all like it was like a thing. what was it like a tank or something? I mean, it was ju- oh, it was just incredible. I don't know who comes up with this, but uh, whoever it is, bravo. There was one line I didn't really like uh, that I would change if I had the opportunity. And I, if you have a line that that you think might might need changing, this is my pitch for a line that they should have changed. Just this one line, I really really think they should change. It's when D is burying himself because he's. Con- contracted a sun poisoning of some kind. Mm -hmm. They should have had more of a visual indicator that that was happening steadily over the film instead of just all at once out of nowhere. Right. I guess they needed more stakes in that fight. I don't know. (laughs) But then the wolf guy didn't even get a fight. He just got killed. Right. And then we get to see him have his last words that, that was a waste of a cool design of a character i don't know but so he's buried himself now to get over the sun poisoning or the the the, the heat sickness or whatever, whatever you want to call it layla shows up and they have something of an interaction and she explains how she owes it to her family to hunt down all the vampires because it's because of the vampires that she has no family now she basically asks d why he's a hunter and he says well i have to be because i'm a dan peel and i can't have a life not like you i i have to hunt because of what I am. And that feels kind of... It's like a caste system. <laughs> yeah. He, the, he, the, he, he had no choice. There's something there's something like that, and it, and it feels inherently wrong, because of being a Dan Peel, he doesn't have to hide from the sun. He can live a, effectively a normal life if right. he wants to. Right. He'll, just, he'll just live forever. So why not? And it leads to these weird kind of questions that don't really get an answer, and the movie doesn't really explore. But if instead he had just said, like you, I also have an obligation to my family. That would have been good. And then the later scenes where he sees his mother would be completely explained. That's right. Without having to get into the details, we would know that, you know, his mother loved his father and that they made D and there's some sort of a resentment from D for that. Or he doesn't, you know, there's, there's a reason why he feels he has to hunt vampires. And it's somewhere in there that his obligation to his mother and maybe his obligation to his father we're not exactly sure but that's smart you picked up on that that was a missed opportunity i i wonder if they wrote that line before they realized what they were going to do with the ending probably and they just never went back and right cut it up and 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 figured out a better way to go about it I'm, i'm not sure i don't think it's completely ruins everything and it just makes the movie bad i'm not saying that but i do think that in every project that we ever work on whether it be movies or a painting or what have you there's always a little more room for right you know a little improvement a little something something exactly a little little of the old razzle dazzle yeah that's right i hope i haven't challenged you 
too much with this movie. I can tell you, you really enjoyed it and you really had a good time. But I also know that the uh, River Hunter D is a, is a really touching movie. It kind of, yeah. it's a little, little bit of a tearjerker, surprisingly. It is, it yeah. is. But it's got me wired. Well, I'll have to find some more vampire stuff. I know there's one movie I really, really want to show you, and I have to find a copy of it. I think I'm just going to go ahead and buy one, and we can watch it. And we'll, we'll forget the rules of the podcast <laughs> one more time. <laughs> And we'll say that because Vampire Hunter D is available for free so easily, you can just go on YouTube or there's a lot of, if honestly, go and Google it. You'll find it. It's very easy to find for absolutely free. And we'll just say that because we were so good on this one, we can do another one okay. where we break the rules that and we sounds, just watch whatever we that want. That sounds great. To yes. hell with everyone. We'll just, we'll just <laughs> yeah. have a good time. I think, I thank you so much for taking the time with me today. I know that uh, this is a lot for everybody. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, I know. Was, of course. It was wonderful. We'll, we'll have to do it again. We and I, will. I know we got to hunt down that one movie and then now this movie we, we've got plans we'll we've do got, this again we got a lot of plans okay we got we got to keep working on it we're gonna we'll, we'll be pros in no time you and me yeah i'm ready i'm ready too all right well all right we'll, we'll call it a day there all right.